um, Technique Tuesday. Super excited. I'm finally back home and in the studio and ready to do the thing. So let's go ahead and talk about today's composition. We're going to be working on a, the idea of radiating lines. So I'm feeling, um, what am I trying to say here? I'm feeling, uh, I'm feeling inspired by, by Tuscany. So the idea of radiating, radiating lines, you know, you could draw it like this, you know, with a circle and make it a sunshine. That's pretty basic, but we could also take that concept and more or less flip it upside down. And oh my gosh, what do we have? We have maybe some grapevines or fields. So you could kind of do rough radiating lines like so. And you see how I'm kind of giving them a little bit of wiggle and jiggle along the way. That just gives it that sort of sense of um, like hills. We could kind of have a hill here and a hill here. And then we have maybe some of those cypress trees that kind of play along the way. So that's roughly the shape that we're going to do. So hopefully that makes some sense to you guys. Um, oh, hey, there's my comment section. Oh my gosh, you guys, I, I'm like all confused here. So thank you for saying hi. Hi, Shelly. Hi, Holly. Yay for the text. You got me. So if you didn't get my text, but you want to get my text, just text the word live, L-I-V-E to 855-737-2245. I'll leave that up here for as much as I can so you kind of can follow along. So now you have a sense of kind of what we're doing. We'll just go ahead and actually get that physically here. So we'll kind of create the lines and then, and I'm just kind of roughing this in. I have rough pencil lines. You notice I'm adding a little bit of curve at the top. And then as we get over here, they start to get a lot closer. Well, maybe they get closer. They're supposed to get closer. Maybe I didn't quite get them all closer, but that's okay. But they're widest, like right here, <clears throat> excuse me, right here in the middle. So we're feeling kind of Tuscany here. And then we'll add kind of a, a, a bush, maybe another bush. Let's see, we have the mountain going like so, another mountain in the background, and then we've kind of got our, our cypress trees. And I'm just kind of sketching that in so we have a sense of what we're doing here. All right. Radiating lines, right? See, it kind of goes straight from the middle and out. Hey there, Sharon. Thanks for joining. Hey, Pam. Good to see you. All right. So let's tone the canvas a little bit. I want to go bright. I know this is super crazy, but I'm going to tone it with hot pink. Why? Um, I don't actually have a reason except that... Uh, actually, I do have a reason. I do. I have a perfectly valid reason. Like I said, I can't get my stuff out of here. We're going to tone the canvas with hot pink because most of the rest of the colors that I think we're going to be using are going to be um, kind of in the greens and browns and yellow zone. So I want to have a little bit of a kick in the be kick kind of behind that. So this, um, this is just a deco art, a neon pink, I think it's hot pink. It's cool. So with little bits of this peeking out, it'll just give a little amp, a little, little kiss of in something interesting. All right, that was pretty fast. So I'm hoping to do most of this painting with a semi-large brush. Um, this one is actually my, this one's my glue brush. Hey, Christy, how's it going? Good to see you. And I'll just go ahead and offload. Oh, look, I'm almost painting a mini version on my offloading thing. Oh, whatever, it's cool. And rinse water, so make sure you've got some rinse water. Always have a lid on mine, because my cat, he's a little, he's a little rascal. Neighbor just dropped, delivered some boxes, and he has already jumped in those boxes. Okay. Now, something I was thinking about the other day, because all my rags came through the wash. If you have a paper towel, you can use it, but if you want to dry your brushes off, I have, like, old sheets. I try not to put, like, offload paint directly on my sheets, but my dead sheets. These are dead sheets, right? They're all cut up. But a little bit of um, paint water is no big deal. There's my good brush. Sorry about that. I used it earlier today. Let's go ahead and give it a quick blast again. When I do the blast, it really just kind of helps us um, work through the design in a little bit more of a timely manner. Otherwise, watching paint dry is, I don't know, maybe the most boring thing ever. So <laughs> hang with me, my friends. And again, as a reminder, if you haven't... Um, if you haven't gotten my texts or are interested in being notified as I go live, just text the word live, L-A-V-E, to this number here, and um, you'll start getting notified. All right, we're going to do some mixing. So I'm grabbing a burnt orange, 
You can also use a burnt sienna. They're pretty much the same thing. This is the professional stuff and this is the the easy to get the easy to get stuff. We'll do a little bit of that. Let's squeeze some yellow. I think I'm going with a school bus yellow today. I want to say this is a from plaid. I mean that is school bus yellow, right? That's like even more more than cadmium. That's that's some serious stuff. And let's squeeze some white out. Which reminds me, do you guys, I forgot to do it, but do you guys paint the lids of your of your bottles? That way when you look down on it, you know what color it is. I know some of these come with dots on them, but let me tell you, those dots are never, are never exactly accurate. So we're gonna begin by kind of creating a, a base tone. Actually, let's add some green too. I'm gonna have a Hauser dark green. Give it a good shake, squeeze it out. All right, so again, that's burnt orange, school bus, cadmium yellow, whatever. It's a really warm yellow. Our usual yellow is this bright screaming yellow, which is really like very lemony. We're going much warmer today. Hauser dark green and of course white. So to mix kind of a, a base, we're gonna do a couple of different bases here. So we'll start with, um, yeah, I think I'll go back, back to forwards. I'm gonna pull some of that Hauser dark green out, a little bit of the burnt orange. Gonna mix it in there, a little bit of the yellow. It's gotten a little too brown for me. But we're trying to neutralize a bit and then a bunch of white. So now we've got a lovely olive -y color. Just tone it with a little bit more green. Oh, sorry, I'm trying to make sure I'm on camera. And we'll just kind of add that here to cover this guy. And if little bits of that pink peek through, no big deal. We can come back and tweak it if we want. So that's a nice kind of back tone. I'm going to take a little bit more yellow and I'm going to warm it up and kind of add, oh, I need to go a lot warmer, don't I? Just going to take that and roughly cover here. And the beauty of having just marked this up with a permanent marker is I can kind of see right through all this and it's really helpful. And I don't have to second guess where my stuff is. I don't have to freehand it twice. And I think you guys can kind of see where, where this is going as well. Oh, thank you, Cassie. She put the little graduate, the graduate hats and everything. Yes, I graduated last week. Oh my gosh. We had so much fun. But let me tell you, when you hang out with a bunch of Navy people, do you know what Navy people do? They drink and they drink a lot. I, I drink a, a little, not a lot. So that was interesting. And hey there, Elizabeth. Good to see you. Hi, Sarah Elaine. Oh, you like the Hauser Green? Yeah, I like the Hauser Green too. I don't use it all that often. I've been feeling kind of lazy, but today it just felt like it was right. And of course, I'm like starting to pack up all my paints. And so I'm kind of like, oh my gosh, I need this and I need this and I just packed it. So I'm gonna grab some of that burnt orange and bring it over here. And now we're gonna create kind of a tannish color for along this zone. So these two colors are very similar, but you can kind of see this one's cooler because it's got less yellow and more of the Hauser green and the white with just a little bit of the other stuff. I'm gonna bring a little yellow into this guy because I want it to feel kind of golden. I'm gonna just kind of blend it right into that mix that we had because the green neutralizes. I don't know if you can see that, but it really kind of takes it down a notch from not being quite so electric. And then a little bit more white to kind of lighten it up. Make a little more yellow. I feel like, you know, when we use all these earth tones, I'm like getting back to my roots. Because, you know, I started off using the very simple, like, kind of earth and mineral pigments. And it's really only since I got into my 40s that I started discovering all the fluorescent colors. And, oh, my gosh, I love me some fluorescent colors, as you can see by our strange background. And here, the beauty of this also is if I miss a spot um, and a little bit of pink shows through, you know, why not? It adds a little interest. So I'm kind of running out a little bit, so just kind of keep mixing. And the beauty of this craft paint is it drives pretty fast. So even if I smudge up like half my half my palette really fast, um, it, it'll be dry really quickly. And I got a paint booger in there. Yeah. Okay, so that's not bad. Let's go ahead and block in a couple of things. So I'm now just going to kind of take tempted to take straight Hauser green, but I feel like that's asking for it. So I'm going to bring it here into that kind of brownie gunge a little bit um, and use it 
kind of just right in here. And this is a little bit tr more transparent than I'd like. But yeah, I want a little bit of the brown to tone down the green and just neutralize a little. Holly said, oh, Evie says, hi, interesting beginning. Isn't that crazy? It always starts off ugly. I mean, so seriously, check this out. I did a paint party today. So this is the finished result. And if you're a member of, or if you're not a member, well, obviously, if you're a member of the Inner Circle, you have access to this. But also, if you are part of the Let's Paint with Blue Cat, I did this a year ago, and we've got it. But this is how it starts out. Like, that is totally, totally different from this to this. So when we do wacky, wacky layers, it's all good. All right, so now I'm going to just kind of, I'm going to keep working with a big brush and I'm going to start adding kind of the dark, the dark um, cypress trees in there. I'll tell you, I would kind of wouldn't mind getting back to, back to Tuscany again. All right, so I'm starting to create a pattern that's really not good. So I'm going to need to kind of, oh, I have a tree there though, so I better add another one. So we're going to make a clump here. We're going to make a clump of trees. That's the tallest one sort of darn myself and mess myself up a little bit when I have all those permanent marker lines, but no biggie. So these are kind of just think of like the cypress trees. Ba, 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 ba. Say, oh, Holly says, save the daffodil with my mermaid tail to pack last. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I promise you, I still have like one and a half drawers full of, of paint. I just don't have nine drawers full of paint. So I pared down, but I'm still a maximalist, so we're going to still get kind of maximalist stuff. Oh, Evie says, I love the blossoms, and Sarah says, love the painting I just shared. Thank you. So those are um, available. The tutorials are available in the Let's Paint with Blue Cat um, free group, so you are welcome to pop in there. You're going to have to look for, like, use the search term, search term, there we go, blah, 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 title basin. It's from a year ago. So I just add a little bit of darkness kind of in between these two pieces. I'm going to grab a little bit of white on that and just kind of blend it a little. And just kind of come in and go over this mountain here. I just feel like I feel like I don't have quite enough contrast. And then I'll come in with a little bit more of the dark and just blend into that. There we go. And I don't want to rely on just the paint to create the definitions. Okay. That's a little better. So now you've got the more solid background. Yeah, those blossoms are, are they were so much fun to do too. So I had this class and they're like, yeah, we, we saw your title, but title basin, you know, project. Could we do that in an hour? And I'm like, Whoa! so let me tell you, that was interesting. So we're going to take kind of that same green that we kind of did for, for the bushes and whatnot. And we're going to begin to kind of do like this. We're going to do the grapevines and just kind of or the crops, whether it's grapes or lavender or whatever it is. You guys can even vote. Do you want this to be great? I mean, it is Tuscany, right? <laughs> yeah, Christy, maximalist. I found I came across that word and I was like, um, yeah, I tried really hard to be a minimalist and I failed so miserably that and then I saw the word maximalist. I'm like, yeah, that's me. Mm -hmm. We're just going to we're just going to embrace it. I'm a hereditary clutter bug. So I have an organizer who I've now started to pay to help me out. And she's amazing because I have finally just bit the bullet and said, I can't do this by myself. So there you go. You want to know my weakness and my point of shame? I'm a clutter bug. All right. So you see how I just kind of work my way out that way. And now I'm going to just kind of work my way back in the other direction. And keeping it kind of rough and fluffy, you know, just kind of blapping, blapping. That is the technical term. Blop it down. So again, pulling that Hauser dark green every so often, if it starts to get too kind of bluey green, we're going to re-add some of that um, burnt orange. You know, it's funny. I can never think of the word like burnt sienna or raw sienna or any sienna until I'm trying to think of another term that is the same color. And then I'm like, the only thing that comes to mind is sienna. That is just how it works. I'm going to thicken this guy here. I feel like there's too much of a gap. And add just a little bit more thickness in these first center pieces that are kind of in our main point of vision because you know you think about these these are like the rows are like going to be eight to ten eight to ten feet apart and just kind of getting those lines and you notice that they, they kind of 
you know you really get that sense of contour and hill when you add a you kind of add a bend to your, your to your parallel lines so the brain knows they're parallel but if you draw them parallel they look stiff and funny oh evie says uh tuscany's on your bucket list heck yeah i went to florence and you know what the uffizi museum for all my art aficionados that is the place to be so so um you know we kind of have the, the the rolling horizon line here because again it's hills so the horizon line if you're doing perspective is like this but we're looking at the world this way so if the horizon line okay whew, slow down wendy i'm like whoa i have not had enough caffeine today oddly so if the line is here you want to actually take the um extend the 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 plantings just a little bit beyond that because remember they're standing up and so these things are like six to six to eight feet high and so they're actually going to kind of just roll right over the edge of that thing okay so now we've kind of got this roughed in right like we got some dark colors it doesn't look pretty yet but it's kind of interesting oh let's see holly says one who owns nine kayaks isn't a minimalist i call it prepared do you know i am selling off most of my kayaks and we get down to the bare bones all right, I'm just gonna add a little more hauser, just a straight hauser in a few spots to just kind of amp a couple of the green bits. Again, what we like to do is we like to paint dark to light. I think I'm gonna focus first on these kind of, th these, these bits, and then we'll kind of fill in around that, and that way we'll have a little extra kind of line, lineage peeking through, especially if we don't go all the way up to the edges. Oops, that one got a little too straight needs to be fluffy right because these are bushes not bushes they're vines they're they're grapevines all right so again i'm just kind of looking like where do things look a little bit too a little bit too see-through a little bit too not quite what we wanted so i want to go with a lighter green should we do mermaid tail should we do mermaid tail we'll do some mermaid tail just for fun I'll add a little bit of teal here actually that's peacock teal Folk art teal. Sorry, folk art teal, not even peacock teal. Whatever. They're all close enough. Pull a little bit of that out here. So that's a very bluey green, right? Or it's very blue. Bluey teal. Grab a little bit of yellow. Kind of mix that in. Now, if I were to go with a um, with a daffodil yellow, which is a very cool yellow, this green would be way more popping. But because this is such a warm yellow, uh, we tend to get a little bit a little bit more of a mellow green but that's still significantly lighter and a little bit brighter than than the hauser in fact it might be too much so i'm going to rub that into the hauser and kind of create a mid a mid color and let's go ahead and add some of that kind of bushy bushy green to and we'll do the we'll do the rose here and the bushes here well, those are trees aren't they they're clumpy trees now the one of the little secrets here is that you're kind of going closer along the top, but inside that darker color. And you're making sure that you're not covering all of it. You want that darker color to kind of peek through. So you're almost just kind of dabbing the color on. And you're almost thinking of it kind of almost allowing like to like leaving some sort of parallel line from your brush on here. But imperfect. We like imperfect around here. It gives it that kind of painterly touch. Now on these sort of three wider middle ones, you want to kind of go down the center, but after these three middle ones, as you go off to the side, you want it to, you want the lighter, slightly lighter green to be kind of over the, um, more towards the top of the line. So this one, I'm going to start to shift towards the top. So there's going to be a little bit more of the dark peeking out to the right, excuse me, to the left of this one and to the right of this one. And we'll get this one in here. We'll just plop it in. So can you guys actually see that? I don't know. Let me lift it up. Maybe those details will start to show. It's still a little hard to see, but I do have the lighter green on top of the darker green. And I'm keeping it rough, right? And I kind of want to show you how you can get away with doing cool stuff, even when you're kind of keeping it rough. So this was the sort of the, on the darker side and we'll add some of that to our trees here but again we want our trees our happy little cypress trees to sort of show i could use a black on this but y'all know i think you guys at this point know how i feel about black we only use it when we really need it otherwise we avoid it okay 
So now we'll come into that lighter green that we mixed. So I like this, this sort of olivey color mixed with the mixed with the remnants of our hauser. It gave us just a nice depth. And now we'll just kind of come in and add a little bit lighter over that. And again, keep it kind of PC, allow the other two colors to show. But do you see how now those are starting to pop? But because we have the other colors peeking through, it gives it that kind of round, live bushy look. So we'll add a, just a couple of bits on these, these cypress trees, just a little bit. Kind of like these cypress trees to be darker. Ma, 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 ma. So I guess we'll call this one Tuscany, right? Let's pull a little bit more of that teal in, a little bit more of that school bus yellow, which might be a, yeah, it's probably a dark cadmium. That's probably what that is. I don't know, I forgot to label it. I'm usually really good about that, but sometimes I forget. So again, kind of going along the top here, keeping it rough. You want those other green tones to peek through. So this is like where it's kind of catching, catching the light. Again, it's going to give it that depth. And so some of that darker, the very sort of first base dark coat that we gave it, I'm going to kind of curve around at the top here. It's almost going to also stand in for like the, um, not the stems, the roots, the, the, the bait, whatever it is. What's the word guys? Help, help. I can't speak English today. The stems, the stalks, the, I don't know. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? So I'm just kind of keeping that light. This one again is going to be kind of straight down the center, kind of PC. You want the little bits to peek through. Lather, rinse, repeat. I feel like you kind of got the idea, but it's fun to see this all come together. I'm going to rotate this a little here so I can kind of keep tabs. Hopefully that's looking okay. My, my brush is, act, is actually pretty sharp on this right now. So then again, whoops, that was interesting. I'm going to kind of just add a little extra. Again, we want this to kind of come right over that hill, hill line. It's kind of a horizon line. I mean, it's not the traditional horizon. So now we've got some interesting greens here. We've got this sort of see-through green, but again, it's in Tuscany, it tends to be very golden. So that's not, that's not out of the ordinary. And maybe let's see what happens if we take a little bit of white and add it to this guy. Ooh, that's a, that's going to pop that a little bit. That's nice. I'm going to take that one. All right. Lather, rinse, repeat. I'm going to skip the cypress. I want to keep them kind of in that darker zone. I'm going to add a, just a little couple bits of this kind of along the top parts here. Just kind of using the corner to kind of piece a little bit of bush in. That sounds terrible. And just a few little blip blops across each of these. Keep it light. Again, you want your color to show, but you also want just that little sun kiss thing. Isn't it crazy how you can just kind of blop some paint on? And it kind of gives a pretty good impression. I'm always, I'm always amazed. So it's like my, my goal in life these days is I don't want to call it sloppy, lazy painting. Cause it's really not. Cause you have to be pretty intentional as you do this, but you know, how can I give, give the impression of something without totally put vines. Thank you, Christy. She said vines, right? Yes. The, the vines, the, the roots and stalks of the vines, whatever it is. Goodness me. My English is bad right now. I'm, well, I'll admit I'm a little tired. I really haven't had a chance to recover from the, from the travel. So y'all may not know it, but I'm totally an introvert. Like, so after this last week, I, as my 12 year old puts it, mom, my social battery is worn down. And I was like, yes, that's, that's exactly where, that's kind of where I was when I got home. Like, I just need to sit in front of like a Netflix show, preferably a Hallmark one, something really cheesy just like decompress but we'll get there either way you know what painting is so stinking like therapeutic this makes me happy hopefully it makes you guys happy too all right just got a few extra thicker blops kind of towards the towards the foreground gives a little bit of a something all right really tempted to use this color slightly back here, but I think that's going to mess things up. 
How can I, how can I, how can I, how can I? All right, I'm gonna go even lighter. So I'm gonna add some yellow, yellow to that. So what I'm also working to do here is we're kind of messing with darks and lights. So that's your values and then, you know, different variations. So if I add some yellow and then some more white, it becomes much lighter and a springier green than what we used previously. So this is cooler. And I think I'm going to add just a little, this is a very big brush for this. This is asking for it, but I'm going to kind of add a little, little bit of lightness kind of going on back here. Maybe kind of rolling kind of behind these guys. I don't know. It's just sort of an additional horizon line and then just kind of fill in a little bit behind those. Cause this, um, this, this, this background hill is a little bit too, a little bit too translucent. I think we want just a little bit more. Hopefully we don't look at this and go, Wendy, what have you done? Every so often I have that, I have that reaction, but you know, we always can figure out how to save it. So this is good. It gives us an opportunity to kind of come around. And again, we're still sticking with that big brush. And if the big brush make, makes you uncomfortable, keep practicing with it. It's kind of freeing. And in some ways it also sort of forces you to, to loosen up because you can't be super controlled when you're using a big brush like this. So I'm like, all right, we're going to use the tiny corner to just kind of squeeze in little bits here and there. Okay. That works. It worked. That did work. Whew. I'm going to add a little bit more yellow to that. Kind of bring it in. Yellow it up. Okay, we're just kind of variations and maybe just a... Yeah, I don't know. All right, I'm going to smudge it. A little bit here and smudge it. Oh. No thank you, Google and Pinterest. Okay. So just a little bit. I don't want, I don't want to do too much. I think I would do want to keep some of that kind of orangey, funky color peeking through. So I'm just adding dabs of this um, yellowed green kind of along the edge, again, to kind of differentiate between the top, the upper and lower portion. Add a little toning here, maybe a little bit kind of right along the edge here as it's catching the sun. I know it's a pink sky is pretty crazy. I promise we'll get that sky. Or remind me if I don't, right? Y'all yell at me. Wendy, you forgot your sky again. Now, I'm painting this as if it's daytime, so if we add a sunset sky, we would have to come in and add all kinds of other tones. So I'm going to stick to kind of a daytime. So I've just added a little bit of lightness along this curve here. So now we get kind of three, three things plus our friend here. All right, so now through here we want to get a golden very pale golden yellow. I'm going to offload my brush, just kind of let some of that excess paint go, and I might as well just kind of plop it into my mock-up, right? Because why not? Okay. I'm not going to rinse. We don't need to rinse. This section here is dry, so we'll grab a hunk of school bus. I'm going to get some of this sienna. Uh, see? It's not sienna. It's burnt orange. Just a, just a touch of the mermaid tail to kind of tone it. Again, that just kind of neutralizes it a little bit, keeps it from being quite so bright. And then a big hunk of white. And that is too orange for my taste, so I'm going to grab some more yellow. I feel like we're going to mix like a whole bunch of this stuff. More yellow. I'm just going to keep going with that. So I probably started off mixing too much and I'm going to kind of create two sections. I don't want this to feel white. I just want it to be kind of light, more yellow. Let's see. There we go. Kind of a straw color. All right. That works. That works pretty well. So I'm offload a little bit of that paint right there on my cam or on my palette. We'll just kind of come in and start to add little bits, just kind of dabbing it in. I'm going to leave some of those kind of rusty bits on either side. Well, it's rust colored because of the hot pink and the burnt orange, but just kind of start to fill in a little bit along here. Again, you can kind of keep it soft. You don't even have to do a good job. Just kind of blop the color in. Um, 
So Evie says, I am experience. Oh, you're experimenting with a knife now. You want to switch it up a bit. Oh yeah. Like palette knives, palette knife. This would be a, oh, this would be a fun one with a palette knife, but the palette knife really forces you to just kind of like relax and go with the flow and you, you can't be terribly accurate. So there's, it's, it is so satisfying. All right. So I've got some cool shadows kind of going on here with the darks. So I'm going to become even less kind of accurate with my, with my sort of golden sort of hay, col hay colored soil that, that's in here. I really want little bits of that dark to still continue to show. So probably like right along the upper edge of each of these um, rows of vines is where I'm going to put the emphasis on the light, the light tone and then kind of a little less as we get in closer to the, um, into the roots and the, and the base of, of each of those. Christy, thank you for reminding me of my word that is spines. I feel a little dumb. All right, we'll just come in around here a little bit. This is also why we kind of toned the canvas with a couple of those colors because as little bits peek through, it looks like I meant to do that. Well, I mean, I did, you know what I'm saying, but it ends up looking really intentional. That, yeah, I gotta find out though. What am I really trying to say? Every time I say it looks intentional, really well planned out, I'm like, it is planned out, but. But like somehow you added that color versus just kind of left it behind. So Holly says, I never thought of it that way. Freeing. You avoid them because you're so klutzy with fine motor control. I can totally understand that. All right, I want a little bit more yellow in here. So I'm gonna grab a big hunk of that school bus, plop it here, see if I can grab a little bit of yellow. So, oh yeah, there we go. Now we're getting kind of a golden mustard color. Maybe I'll just mix that right here. That's too much green. All right, one more. Err. All right, you guys, I need more. It's not working. So this is one of those things where brain says, I want yellow, but it's so funny how light a color we actually have to go. So I got a fresh bit of my, I think this is medium cadmium. Now I'm adding a ton of white. Again, I'm trying to like get away from kind of a peachy color, which or if you have too much of that raw sienna or the raw sienna, whatever. All right, and we're just going to add some more. And I'm going to kind of go more on the inside. Yeah, it just kind of adds, oops, there, that's, that's more like it. So that really starts to pop that. Before it was just a little bit too muddy, but I like those undertones, so we want them to show, but we just don't want it to be the dominating, the dominating color. And sometimes like our brains, our brains play tricks on us and they, they tell us it's one color, but then, you know, you oftentimes either have to go a whole lot darker or a whole lot lighter. And I'm finding recently, like, when I go lighter than I think I should, I'm always a heck of a lot happier with the result. And remember, when we tone something, we want it to go darker. What color do we use to make it darker? Let's see, Christy says, girlfriend brain farts are a thing. Oh my God. Oh yeah, brain farts are, brain farts are us this week. I'm like stumbling through the week and it's only Tuesday, but it's cool. But you know, again, the organizer was here till 9.30 last night, which was awesome because we're getting this house all packed up and I've got like at least 60 boxes packed and we're kind of counting, counting the days till we get the truck and move half of it to storage to stage the place. Um, Evie says, do I paint in oils? No, I don't. Um, I've done some oil a long, long time ago in a galaxy very far away. Oil takes a long time to dry and like a week. I, ain't nobody got time for that. Especially when I'm working in a book like this where in half an hour I can be like, Bloop, close it and carry it with me. So um, I know some people absolutely love oils. It it's not, it's not my love language, but more power to you if you do. Okay. Um, 
Pam says black. So I will tell you, Pam, I actually try not to darken things with black because it tends to make things muddy. All right, I'm going to experiment here, y'all. I'm going to add a little bit of this kind of hay shimmery color to the top of this light green section here. I'm going to use my finger to kind of drag it down. And I just want to kind of add like a golden, a light gold, like sun-dried grass kind of feel just to the top there a little bit. All right, that's coming together pretty well. Not bad. So Holly says deeper complementary like purple. So yeah, if I want to cool it down, I would add purple. If I want to just go sort of straight dark and kind of stay in the zone, I would actually use a, just a brown. Uh, preferably one of the umbers. So I have raw umber, always a favorite. Like you can get this in the tube, you can get this however. These are wonderful. Um, let's see, how are we doing here? This is getting pretty close to pretty close to done. We could add some shadow in here, but I feel like it's it's kind of in a good place. We do need to come up with a sky color. So I'm gonna offload my brush. A little bit of that here on my, my sketch. And this is just some junk mail, y'all. Stock prospectus, no less. I get them every every month from every month. So I might as well do something with it. All right. Here's where I always struggle with this, but I'm gonna do it anyways. I'm gonna grab some ultramarine blue. And this green here is dry, so I'm gonna mix it here. Ultramarine blue. I'm gonna add a bunch of white. So that's creating a pretty good sky color. Very neutral though, but that's fine because we're working in a fairly neutral tone. Nothing here is super loud. And I think that's a good color kind of just for kind of along the mountain. And so I'm using my big brush. Look at this, we did this whole thing with our big brush. I'm gonna kind of come along the mountain edge. Now I can go all the way up to the mountain or I can leave a few um, strategic gaps of pink. This is gonna take two coats, just saying. Um, but I do like a few a few little gaps of pink, really teeny tiny gaps. Whoop! Oh, I didn't drop it. Yes, I almost did. These days I keep having like a canvas like right off to my right, and I'm like half the time the the when I drop my brush, it's managed just to flip out of my hand and then like leave a paint streak on my on something that like a piece of art that I've already done. I'm like, gosh, I'm such a such a dingaling. All right. So you notice we just kind of use that to kind of go around. This, this will need a separate, a, a second coat. Like to me, this looks kind of like a gray and some of the green that's kind of left in my brush is starting to peek through, but that's fine. It's just kind of toning it for now, giving us a dark, a darker, more intense color there. I'm gonna offload again. In fact, you can, you know what, rinse, you can rinse. Cause that is not, that is not pretty. We don't want that in there, but it's okay that we got some in the first coat. Do you see how some of that pink is still peeking through? It just adds a little touch of vibrance. All right, using the cloth, drying it off. And let's go for a smidge more of that blue and white. Again, going in the paint pot because my squeezy thing is giving me, giving me grief right now. A little blue, a little white. So the green is not coming off the palette. It's coming from, you know, inside my brush. Again, see how neutral and chill a blue that is, but it works. And I'm kind of going with a with a pinkish blue. Pink being a relative term. Ultramarine tends to have sort of sort of a red, reddish tone. All right, you know what else I'm doing? I'm putting wet on wet, which is making bald spots. I'm gonna give it a quick blast. Um, let's see. So Pam says, do I find mixing different brands affect the hues in a less desired way? Not really. Um, you know, acrylic is acrylic. They may have slight variations in what they do and how they formulate it, but overall, I mean, it's, it's, it's more or less the same stuff. So I mix, I mix all the time. Like, so I tend to, you know, whatever brand has a color I like best or consistency I like best, that's the one I use. So when it comes to ultramarine, my absolute favorite is always going to be the folk art plaid or the plaid folk art. And like my favorite yellow, daffodil yellow is also a folk art. They tend to have thicker, a little bit more intense colors. 
um, but then a lot of, the, but then like mermaid tail, teal, just, you know, let me just start singing Sinead's, nothing compares, nothing, I can't sing, but you know what I'm saying, right? Like I will sing to my mermaid tail, teal, hot pink, you know, whoever's got the best stuff. I like the deco art because I can just buy like a big old tub of it because we plow through this stuff like nobody. Hey there, Julia. What's up, girl? Oh, Christy says she loves the peekaboo pink. I do too. I know some people are like, what is going on there? But for me, it just, it's like that little pop of vibrance in an otherwise kind of chill stick to painting oh wait wait it's also fun to try to pronounce anything starting with phthalo oh my gosh yeah so i don't much use phthalo phthalo cyanine people phthalo cyanine um i don't tend to use the phthalo blues or greens too often because i don't know they're they're more traditional I, they're cool but they kind of drive me nuts so it's a very intense blue um i'm gonna do a I'm going to grab a little bit of the mermaid tail teal right in here. I want to tone it. So I want a little bit more intensity here and I want to just chill it a little along the mountain. So again, my big squeezy of ultramarine and working. So I'm going my, my cheesy paint pots. But I tell you, I love these paint pot things. They have like revolutionized the way I do kids, kids paint parties. All right. So there's a really intense, intense color. I think I can kind of get away with, yeah, that needs some white, doesn't it? Yes, it does. I'm going to kind of bring some of that up here to just. And so the phthalos tend to be a greener blue, and the ultramarines and cobalts tend to be redder. And there's a place and a time for everything. And I think a lot of the teals and mermaid tail probably have some kind of a, like a phthalo, a phthalo base to them. I'll have to break out the phthalos and see what I can actually mix up. But certain colors are honestly, they're, they're their true things. Like a quinacridone, like a magenta, you can't mix that with other colors. That one's a true pigment. All right. Well, that sky is good now. So now we can add some more white. Just come in. But you see now it's kind of like the, oh no, can you see? Let me bring it up here. We've got a little bit more of a pinky, um, cool, like reddish blue going up into a turquoise. I've got that a little bit intense, so I might kind of tone it a smidge, but I don't know. You can play with this guy. We always want to go really bright blue, and then I always find like add a whole bucket load of white, and then you're kind of more where you need to be. But you can kind of keep it rough as you add some of that color, right? And it'll just give it that sort of variable graded sky because in general the sky is very very graded it's never just one straight color it's usually a bunch of colors uh let's see here so oh my gosh julia says try to tell everybody how she pronounces thalo okay so yes thalo blue is or thalo anything is like one of our favorite words to play with because it's halo this is p elizabeth p t p h t h Halo. I packed my Halo stuff up right now, so I can't show you guys the spelling. But and there's a variation of there's like a variety of spellings. All right, I'm like working the heck out of the sky, but oh, that's fine. I'm babbling. We're having fun. It's cool. All right, that worked better. Yeah. Okay. Do you see how we have the lighter and then the darker? So that makes more sense. And now it looks like you've got this intense sky, and then it goes lighter. So Chrissy says, "Same girl. I will mix professional paints with craft paints." Yes. So in terms like this is my professional high end stuff. We didn't use it today, but I may as well have for that, that base. And so I keep out, you know, my expensive, you know, level three paints and I will do these with craft paints. No problem. You just kind of do what works for you. And I think we're pretty much there if we want to pop anything in here because it is pretty mellow. But again, you know, a lot of folks, we kind of like, we kind of like mellow, but you know, sometimes I need to get spastic to rinse my brush though we could add we could add a little something let's see julia says oh yeah it comes through terrifically well yeah, i'm really happy with how that that sky worked out <laughs> halo i know it's the best word ever well one of them let's play with some red this is the true red oh i got a bigger paint pot of that let's go for the big paint pot because it's easier to deal with 
true red. Or, this is leftover from a, paint, a kid's paint party. I'm like, yeah, no, we don't have to throw that away. I'll, I'll just, I'll just take it with me. All right. So should I photograph this just in case, just in case I ruin it? Let's try that, you guys. Sometimes I have these moments. Okay, quick picture. Yay. Okay. I'm good. Let's let's go out on a limb and see what happens. So I'm I'm kind of minimizing the red on my brush. I think I want to just get it like come down in the shadow areas, just a few little little blobs of red, not too much, but just a few here and there. And red is of course a complementary to to the greens, and so it's going to kind of intensify the shadows. So you can kind of get little bits. You know, some in in the kind of the orange zone, but also kind of some in a few spots over the green. But keep it keep it light. And oh, you know, we can add a little add a little red, um, little red to our cypress here and there. Oops, this thing is all parted into two, and now I'm getting like these little twin dots. Let's jiggle it together. Come on, bright bristles. You're not allowed to split like that. Maybe I didn't dry it well enough. Okay, yeah. So I love, 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 love throwing complementary colors into the shadows. So for these little scrubby tree bush things, I'm going to kind of add some of the darkness in the underside. Actually, it's working pretty good. Uh, oh, so Pam asked, what brand is Mermaid Tail? Mermaid Tail is Decorate Americana. It is this lovely guy right here. So you can get it at Hobby Lobby. I've never seen it at Michael's. So, um, yeah. So I thought for sure that it was like, like a really hard to find color, but it just turns out that, you know, the different stores carry different colors. Um, pretty decent substitutes. No, oh, sorry. I packed them up, but the, um, Oh, here we go. The, the folk art, just plain teal. Or if you want it in French, it's blue sarcel, and I'm pronouncing it absolutely wrong. It's a pretty good, it's pretty analogous to um, Mermaid Tail. It's a little bit bluer. Um, there's just something magical about the way the Mermaid Tail blends with like quinacridone and really any of the colors and the yellow and whatnot. All right, so I'm just kind of adding little bits of red in here. What I feel like is it just kind of livens things up. Again, I'm trying to keep it in this sort of where the shadows would be. Maybe a little bit of red kind of at the base of each of the cypresses. Just kind of blap, blap, blap it on. It's a technical term, people. Blap, blap, blap. Maybe a little bit kind of along in here at the base. Oh, this thing is doing weird things. Yeah, yeah, that works. Just adds a little life. always complementary colors in the shadows if you want to make your shadows come a little bit alive. Otherwise, you know, things can feel a little bit flat. So sometimes by adding an unexpected color in there, it really makes it makes a thing go pow, which, you know, maximalist baby. This is what us maximalists do. We make things go pow because, you know, let's, let's see how many visual treats and, you know, cookies we can hide in there off of my brush and my brush is like too wet so I definitely need to dry it off. I feel like this picture or this picture this this design's pretty close to done. You know if we're really crazy we could come back in and add some hot pink somewhere or you could pick like a fluorescent like fluorescent red my favorite this guy and you could throw some of that in the shadows or if you wanted you could throw little bits of purple in the shadows. I don't know hey what, what would that look like? Should we find out? I'm going to go with a smaller brush just because it's easier to get into my, my paint pots. But if I have a, again, I should take another photograph, right? Because now we're just playing. I'm going to grab some purple pizzazz and maybe just a few purple dots kind of in the shadows. Just a little jiggle jiggle, kind of close to us. I don't know. Just livens things up. Keeps it interesting. Gets us closer to having a whole rainbow. Just little bits. I'm kind of keeping it in the cl in the close zone, just right up to like if I'm standing here looking at this uh, at this vineyard, I'm mostly seeing up close. If I do too much purple, it's going to look like a lavender field. Granted, you could do that, but you're actually going to want your 
yeah, that's a whole lot of layers. We could do that. I'm not today, but we could. Whoops. Uh -huh. Could put a little purple in my cypress if I wanted. Just, I'm kind of keeping the, the, the deeper tones kind of at the base. Ooh, oh my gosh, hello, yes. Well, down in here with my trees. I don't know, you guys, I'm just kind of going off the rails now. The purple wasn't on plan, but I'm kind of having fun. I seem a little out. So, Cassie, are you talking about me being out of focus or my camera being out of focus? It might be a bit of both. Purple makes sense in a great vineyard. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Cassie probably means both. Hopefully you mean the camera, Cassie. <laughs> Okay. Hopefully that's all. So th the camera does have an autofocus. So it could be that when I brought the mermaid tail all the way up high, it focused on that and it needed a minute to kind of come back. <laughs> camera. Yay. I've been blessed. I was like, I know I'm off the rails. I didn't think I was that far off the rails. All right. So I'm feeling like we're, we're kind of in a good place with this. The purple is a little bright right now, but as it starts to dry, it'll kind of sink into kind of a mellow zone. Um, but yeah, this was pretty fun, right? So the, to recap the colors, we have an, a burnt orange or, you know, a burnt sienna. doesn't matter. Same, same. This is just the deco art version. We have a Hauser dark green, which is basically a, an army green or a, a forest green, but it's it's got some warm tones in it. It's not pure cold. Let's see. What else do we, we, we use? Mermaid tail. We had a little hot pink for the base. We used some purple pizzazz because it was there. Ultramarine, which is this guy, really blue. And then we had some school bus yellow, which I don't have a school bus yellow out except for this guy, so I can't show you. Or it's a dark cadmium, whatever, same, same. And then lots of white. I think that covers us. Oh, and red, a little bit of red. This is just a, like a true red or maybe it's the Blick fire red, but it's a very warm red. It's always important you know, to think about warm versus cold. If I'd used like the Tuscan red, even though this is Tuscany, um, I think it would have been too cold. And we really want, we kind of want to mix the warms and colds. When you go with all cold or all warm, well, I don't know, I'm okay with all warm, but all cold makes me crazy. But honestly, it helps add that sort of balance and rhythm of shadows. So sort of also the other recap is that, you know, again, we're talking about composition and it was radiating lines. So the easiest form would be like a sunrise or that kamikaze thing with all the lines coming out of the circle. But I also felt like like rows of something would be fun. So hopefully you had fun doing this. Once you've done it, please, please, please come to the Let's Paint with Blue Cat Studio group and post it. Absolutely love to see your version because yours is going to be super unique and it's going to be... It's going to resemble mine, but it won't look like mine. And you know what? Your take and your vision of this is going to be just as cool and totally different. Um, if you guys have further questions, please feel free to post them. Oh, you know what? We got to do the big reveal. I love this. My other favorite part is peeling the tape. It's all about those crisp edges. It is all about the crisp edges. Wow. Can you believe it, you guys? Since we started doing these... Um, these Tech Tuesdays and stuff, like this, this sketchbook, which was like empty and neglected for years, is finally like getting full up. I'm uh, running out of running out of pages. Holly asks, "Does all cold make it flat?" It can, it can, um, and I think really more it's the play of light and dark. I mean, it, in many cases here, we had to neutralize some stuff, so I may be kind of talking out of school on that one but I personally just feel more comfortable with a mix of warm and cold. So the greens were kind of cool. Um, oh, Christy, thank you. She says it looks awesome as always. Yeah, I think this came out pretty fun. So definitely, you know, go ahead and give it a try. Um, you know, if you, whoops, if you'd like the tracer um, inner circle folks, I will post that for you. I obviously don't have one yet because, well, because I don't, because we just, we just drew it today. Um, but I can certainly make one uh, for the rest of you guys. If you want the tracer for this, you can text me. Um, text Tuscany. Text the word Tuscany. To 855-737-2245. There you go. Tusk, 
text Tuscany. And I will get you the tracer. Again, inner circle folks, I will make you guys a priority for getting that posted. Um, and if you guys have... Oh, Pam says, my tape only pulls off clean if I use a blow dryer. Interesting. Uh, what, what am I using? I'm just using painter's tape that I bought at Lowe's. I am using the 3M brand, I will tell you. Like, I'm not a brand person, but when I find something that works really well, I stick with it. This 3M stuff comes off really nicely. Oh, oh, look, this is the safe release. Oh, I probably paid premium for that. But honestly, all of my blue tapes, because I have all kinds of painter's tape, because you know what? When I paint the house, I don't use tape. Uh, I freehand it. That's, that's my happy place. Um, but the safe release is pretty awesome. It comes off really easily. And in fact, when I try to reuse it, it doesn't stick so well. So it's perfect for a one-time use. So there you go, Tuscany. And again, if you want the tracer, text Tuscany to 855-737-2245, and I'll get it to you. All right, you guys. I love you, and ask away as you have more questions. Hugs and kisses. Happy Tuesday. Bye. Ooh, let's see.